What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Will Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Toyota Supra, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because of course, the legendary name, the Supra has a very recognizable and very coveted name for sure. And there is one big change for the 2024 Supra as well, which we'll be covering, of course. But ultimately, in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust club, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Supra. First one being the 2.0, starting at 46440 Then you got the 3 liters starting at $55,400. Then you got the 3.0 Premium, which is the one we are in today, starting at $58,550. And lastly, the new trim level for 2024 being the 45th Anniversary Edition, going for $65,275. So as you can imagine, with those trim levels, there are actually two different power plants available for the Supra. First one, of course, belonging to the 2 liter, the 2.0. That one is powered by a 2 liter twin scroll turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 255 horsepower, 5,000 RPM, 295 pound feet of torque, coming in at right around 1,500 RPM. Power being sent to the rear wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, zero to 60 time for that one, approximately five seconds flat. That's plenty respectable there. Top speed, 155 miles per hour with MPG numbers coming in at 25 in the city, 31 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel, but that's a pretty good highway number actually. But so then there is that other engine configuration, of course, belonging to all of the trim levels with the 3.0 in front of them and the 45th anniversary edition, of course, but that one is powered by a three liter twin scroll turbocharged inline six cylinder. Gotta love that. 382 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 368 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM. Power sent to the rear wheels yet again through a six speed manual or an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters. We do happen to have the eight speed automatic, but anywho, zero to 60 time for this one, approximately 3.9 seconds. That's plenty respectable again. Top speed, again, 155 miles per hour with MPG numbers 23 in the city, but again, 31 on the highway. Gotta love that, premium fuel, of course. But before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Supra, I did wanna to mention to you guys, the drive mode. It is singular, but it is a sport driving mode. It's located directly behind the shifter there. Uh, adjustments will include shift points, throttle response, steering sensitivity, the exhaust valves, and actually the suspension damping settings as well. We'll get more into that a little bit later when I cover the suspension, but a lot of adjustments with that sport driving mode. So now I haven't got all of that out of the way. Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test at the same time. I want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react, but I also want to see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. Oh, cool. There is actually a full manual shift mode. I actually just slid the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. Um, I put it in sport driving mode. It did adjust the gauge colors a little bit, so that's pretty cool too. And it is telling me what gear I am in up in my manual shift mode here up on the digital gauges. So we are all set. Let's go ahead and pull out onto the road here. Let's find this straight away in three, two, one, go. Whoa, that's instant. <laughs> what the deuce, man? That is fun. That is fun and heck of a grip. My goodness, all that power being sent to the rear wheels, there was maybe a little bit of skidding, but for the most part, that is a heck of a grip, dude. This thing stayed planted. I didn't expect that because typically you send all that kind of power to the rear wheels and you're going to have some issues. You're going to be sliding left and right like I did in the CA Corvette or something but yeah this thing gripped well that is a heck of an acceleration felt it in the pit of my stomach paddle shifters were lightning quick that was fun dude this car is fun this is why it has such a legendary name and i know a lot of this is bmw don't get me wrong guys but this is a fun car just let me say that but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch ventilated rear discs as well now the calipers are going to differ slightly dependent upon the uh the configuration that you go with so for the two liter you're actually going to find single piston front calipers 
but for any of those three liter trim levels, you're gonna find four piston front calipers. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 100 feet even. That's ridiculous. That's a heck of a 60 zero number right there. As far as braking feel goes, it's on the firm side of things. Ah! I just love this car. I can't stop. It's on the firm side of things. It does instantly bring you to a stop. And back to that number real quick, 60 to zero and 100 feet. Typically in a sports sedan, you get the one teens. Sports cars, you get like 110 or 109 or something. So 100 feet, that's ridiculous. Like that is an insane braking number. So there's no way you're rear ending anyone in the Supra. I'm just telling you, but. Anywho, the touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a double joint type McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And if you were to go with the three liter release, you're also going to get an adaptive damping suspension. So that's the one that you want to go with. I'm just telling you because that monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well so it does give you the best of both worlds without it i can't imagine the ride quality because i can tell you guys right now with the super you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road as expected in a car like this so that adaptive damping suspension is certainly making this a smoother ride but again you still feel it so without it i can't even imagine how how much you would really feel the road like in the two liters so yeah, um, it, it's okay. The ride quality is okay. It's not as bad as my 2019 Ford Mustang GT that I modified, but uh, you do still tend to feel a decent amount of the road. I'll just say that. As far as steering feel goes, I love it. It's definitely weighted on the heavier side of things, especially in that sport driving mode. So huge fan of the steering feel. As far as cabin noise goes, you do tend to hear a good bit of road noise and all that fun stuff coming into the cabin so that's to be expected in a car like this so if you're buying the super it's probably not something that bothers you personally but that touching our rear visibility it's okay it's actually not as bad it's not as bad as the nissan z it's not as bad as a camaro so i actually don't mind it i can see perfectly fine out the back i like that little duckbill spoiler type of thing going on in the back too we'll get more to the exterior in a little bit but it did want to also mention in terms of visibility is i am actually looking at a head-up display right now uh, it's a lot easier to see without sunglasses, but it is showing me my speed, speed limit, and safety features up on uh, my windshield here, and it's pretty darn bright. I don't have a problem with that, but would have been cool if when you put it in sport driving mode, it came up with a more aggressive head-up display like BMW does in so many of their vehicles, so change the look a little bit. I think that would have been stinking cool, but anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024. Toyota Supra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Toyota Supra finished in absolute zero, in case you were curious about the exterior color name that we had on this particular one. But let me go ahead and start with what's new on the 24 Supra, starting with that 45th anniversary edition. That is really the big major change for the 2024 model year. Only 900 are actually going to be produced. You can finish those in white or orange. You only get two color choices, but pretty cool color choices though. Matte black wheels are gonna come with that when you get a body side graphic and a manually adjustable rear spoiler as opposed to our duckbill spoiler that I'm gonna to touch on here in a little bit. But let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, you would think this one would be made in Japan because it is Toyota after all, but VIN actually starts with the letter W, indicating that this one typically would be built and assembled in Germany. However, final assembly point for the Supra is Austria believe it or not. So again, this is a lot of components are coming from Germany because BMW has supplied the, a good bit of the parts for the Super. You guys probably already know that. But anyways, starting up front, full auto leveling LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. Get the automatic feature with that along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and that sense the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. You got an aerodynamic enhanced front splitter you guys can see that that is finished in matte black that looks dang good up there and uh, in case you're curious about these accents here found just behind the headlights they are not functional it's actually filled in with plastic but did want to mention that because every now and then somebody will ask but that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Supra let's now go ahead and swing around to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one gloss black a pillar actually will come standard for all trim levels across the board for the Supra so one of those things that distinguishes itself for sure 
gloss black side mirrors coming with the 2.0 matte black side mirrors coming with the 3.0 heated side mirrors will come standard but the memory settings for those side mirrors coming only with the 3.0 in case you were curious then take a look down at the wheel setup though 18 inch cast aluminum 10 spoke alloys for the 2.0 but then 19 inch aluminum alloys coming standard for that 3.0 wrapped in michelin pilot sport tires so those were the tires they gave us that incredible grip during that acceleration gotta love those bright red calipers too behind the wheels but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and swing around to the back all right so now let's see our around to the back of this one you guys will first notice there's no kind of shark fin antenna or anything up top so i love that clean look personally back to the spoiler that i keep mentioning so i know it's not really technically a spoiler but it's kind of integrated and it's kind of like an integrated duckbill spoiler i think it looks dang cool but again if you go with the 45th anniversary you are going to get a manually adjustable rear spoiler so a little bit of a difference there led taillights though do come standard across the board you gotta love that you got a little bit of that gr badging found on uh well, right there. I don't know how to describe it, but it's right there, guys. Uh, just below it all, you're going to find a matte black rear diffuser. That definitely looks good as well. And to the sides, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Keep in mind, the sport driving mode is going to open those valves and give you a much deeper sound. So I'll give you the sport driving mode here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> So now since we are around to the back of the super when it comes to opening that rear trunk there is a button on the key fob that is how you're going to go ahead and open that up but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 10.2 cubic feet but to my surprise you actually do have grocery bag hooks back there did not expect to find that because this is a supra that's typically an suv feature also led cargo lining back there as opposed to the halogen bulbs i like that too and a cargo cover is also going to come standard and you guys can see you got some subwoofers back there kind of in the trunk area too so i liked that we will be doing a sound system test here in a little bit but typically next i make my way to the rear seats but Right? there are no rear seats because this is the Supra after all. So let's go ahead and swing up to the front seats. Manually adjustable front seats for the 2.0, power adjustable front seats with power lumbar. For the 3.0 trim levels, you're gonna find memory settings for those 3.0 trims, an Alcantara leather combination for the 2.0 and 3.0, but then full leather seating for the 3.0 premium that we have today and the 45th anniversary edition. Heated front seats then coming for all the 3.0 trim levels. As far as seat comfort goes, I didn't complain a single time in this test drive, so seating is plenty comfortable for me. I kind of like that they're all one piece too. It's a pretty cool look to it, but then making our way to the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is manually adjustable, but it is leather wrapped. So I liked that. I didn't have any issues there. Then taking a look at the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. This is a BMW key 100%. Got the Toyota logo on the one side. Typically your M colors are found on the side, but in Toyota's case, they finished that in red. But anywho, then on the other side, lock, unlock, and button to pop the rear trunk there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, you're going to find an 8.8 inch digital gauge cluster. Again, it is going to adjust the colors dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So I liked that. Also, it's got all of your basics. Of course, it's got your outside temperature, time of the day, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Uh, as far as range goes, by the way, um, we're missing one bar as far as the fuel goes, and we got 305 miles of range, just in case you were curious about that. A digital speedometer is gonna be all the way to the left there, but the tachometer is front and center, of course, in a car like this, that makes sense. And uh, again, you got the head-up display as well. But say so then make your way to overall interior quality. First thing I wanna mention is the knee support cushions that do come standard found for the driver's side right knee there that is pretty cool aluminum pedals for the 3.0 premium and 45th anniversary editions dual zoom climate control though does come standard so both driver and passenger can set their own individual temperatures there auto dimming 
rear view mirror with home link control strapped to three different garage doors that actually comes standard for all trim levels across the board so you gotta love that wireless phone charger for the three liter premium like we have today the 45th anniversary edition by the way the wireless phone charger is located just in front of the shifter um, by the way since we're there we got a 12 volt power outlet usb charging port everything surrounding the shifter is finished in authentic carbon fiber it's not just some fake knockoff stuff like you usually find on other vehicles this is the real deal this is real carbon fiber i love that finish that looks so dang good got an electromechanical parking brake as well you got your dual cup holders just behind that and a teensy tiny little bit of storage just behind that. So if you were looking for any storage in the center armrest, there is no such thing here in the Supra. All of your storage can be found kind of in the passenger side glove box if you wanted that. Or like I said, that tiny little bit of storage just behind the cup holders. But anyhow, everything is kind of finished more purposeful. Nothing too crazy as far as interior quality goes. I will say the big highlight for me was the carbon fiber trim, the authentic carbon fiber trim here surrounding the shifter. But uh, interior quality, it, gets the job done but there's a lot of just basic black finishes i'll just put it that way but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen and so you're going to find an 8.8 .8 inch display screen for the 2.0 and 3.0 trims that is going to be controlled by using the circular dial and buttons just to the right of the shifter however for the 3.0 premium and 45th anniversary edition it is also a touch screen so a little bit of a difference there bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard android auto apple carplay you're going to find factory navigation system for that 3.0 premium and 45th anniversary edition you got some of your car statistics up there as well or traffic information got no notifications of course along with your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there's actually three of them believe it or not depending upon the trim that you go with so four speakers is going to come standard with that 2.0 10 speaker hi-fi sound system from bmw of course comes with 3.0 they always do that hi-fi sound system and then a 12 speaker jbl sound system for the 3.0 premium and 45th anniversary edition so we got the jbl i love that because i had a jbl subwoofer back in my uh, rsx back in the day so let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> Bang Rang really is the perfect song for the Supra, I swear. I used to listen to Bang Rang when I was playing Call of Duty with my wife back in the day. That is a heck of a song. It gets you fired up, but he loves Skrillex. But anywho, sound system is pretty darn good. Plenty of clarity there. Not a ton of bass. Not as much bass as I expected. I'll put it that way. Wouldn't have minded a little bit more there. But... Uh, yeah, ton of clarity. I don't mind that sound system. But anywho, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Super in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. A tiny little screen there to the right. Wish it was a little bigger, but um, that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. Also have a tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning with steering assist and brake assist then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts i think the very best part of the supra is all the driving dynamics which toyota and bmw i'll put it either one of them absolutely crushed that acceleration was breathtaking and the fact that i didn't spin during that acceleration with all the power being said to the rear wheels says a lot right there because typically that is not the case with most rear wheel drive vehicles with that much power paddle shifters were lightning quick as well also loved that braking with the 60 to zero and only 100 feet that's absolutely nuts love that firm braking feel steering feel is excellent as well weighted on the heavier side of things it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go so overall like i said the driving dynamics are absolutely amazing also love the authentic carbon fiber trim on the inside here that's another big big positive for me i always like the real carbon fiber stuff i had a carbon fiber hood on my rsx as well back in the day and yes i modified that like crazy but so that's my two positives but uh let's go to the two room for improvements here uh the interior quality overall when you take out that carbon fiber it's definitely on the basic side of things i will say that plenty of just black plastic accents and kind of 
black hard touch kind of material so um i guess that's to be expected i don't know most of the money i'm sure went into the performance in this thing not so much the fit and finishes but and the other thing is and this is a big thing for me this is the supra the generation that loved the supra grew up watching fast and furious one with all of the led lighting and all that stuff the underglow or the street glow whatever you want to call it i would think with the way bmw does ambient lighting uh toyota probably could have opted for some cool ambient lighting colors within this thing multi-color ambient lighting at least give us eight colors if not the 64 colors that you do on bmws i think that would be a really big hit with super owners especially if it came from the factory and it was clean and you didn't have to put the little tubes underneath your seats that you plugged into the 12 volt power outlet you know what i'm saying if you were in that generation but yeah i think ambient lighting would have done really well but anyways let me know what you guys think of the super in the comments section below that's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.